Stuka Joe here. Today we're not going to talk about any particular war game, but counter trays because there's a new kid on the block and it is this Aegis counter tray. It is a relatively new product and Aegis sent me a box of these counter trays and I've been um, storing some of my games using this counter tray and today we're going to uh, stuff couple of these counter trays with counters of different sizes so you have an idea of how efficient this counter tray is in terms of spacing and we have the counter tray from Aegis flanked to the left here with GMT's counter tray which is uh, up to this point you can say is the standard and what we've all been used to and to the right we have DVG's counter tray and you can see right off the bat that the Aegis counter tray is longer and makes better use of the space. There's no lip surrounding the tray in order to close the lid. So there's more spacing in each one of these cells, which are larger than those uh, by uh, GMT and DVG's trays. Here we see the Aegis counter tray with its lid. The lid has a different mechanism from the ones that we're used to from GMT and DVG. You see that little indenture there that holds the lid together in each one of its corners. So we have to use this lip here in order to detach the tray from that particular corner. And we do the same for the other side. And once that is done, we have to also do the same here. So it's a, a little different, but of course the plus is that the lid is firmly attached to the counter tray. With, for example, GMT's counter tray, we see that much of the space of the counter tray has this flap uh, that uh, mimics the size of the lid, and the lid is easy to open like that, but also it's easier for it to open accidentally. Now, I have to say my experience with GMT trays is that the lids fit pretty snugly and pretty tight. So back to the Aegis counter tray, and we can see, as we've seen before, that it is longer than the other tray. So will it fit in a standard wargaming box? So let's see if it fits in this one. This is the Dark Summer by GMT which uses GMT's one and a half inch thick box. So let's open this box and see everything that's inside. We have the rules of play, we have the playbook, we have player aids, and we have of course the map. Another player aid here, and we have these two sheets of counters. Now these counters are nine sixteenths of an inch, slightly larger than your standard half inch counter. So let's assume that we've punched all these counters and we've placed them inside the Aegis tray. Now we see that the game brings an insert which we have to remove if we want to place any kind of tray inside the box. So we place the Aegis tray and you can see it takes up all of the space but it fits comfortably in that GMT box. So that means we can place the die inside one of the compartments or just on top of the components when we finish. Let's place back all of the components. Here we have the play raids with the map. And now we place back the two books. And the die on top, close the box, and it fits perfectly there. So this is the one and a half inch box, and of course, if it fits this box, it will fit any other GMT box because they are the same in terms of length and width, where they vary is in their thickness here, and uh, 
this is one of the thinnest GMT boxes, the one and a half inch box. If we would place a GMT tray inside a GMT game, you're going to see that there's going to be this extra space here. And normally what we do is we just throw the die there. Uh, and you can't store any counters there. So the uh, Aegis tray fills that space completely, meaning that you have more space to place counters there. What if you want to place the tray inside this box? This is Brave Little Belgium. This is by Hollenspiel. And this is the format of games that are printed by Blue Panther, which are smaller format games. Here we see that I have the counters in baggies and there's a bunch of dice. So if we want to place the Aegis tray here, we're out of luck because it is longer than the box. If you want to use a tray, you can use GMT's tray because it fits there perfectly. So uh, that's one thing to consider. Now normally, I know what you're saying, these games by White Dog Games and Hollenspiel don't bring a lot of counters and uh, baggies are just fine. And that is for most of my Hollenspiel and White Dog Games the case. And what about your old Avalon Hill games? Here we see Panzer Group Guderian. And this one I have also in baggies. And again, here, even if we try to fit the GMT counter trade, the GMT counter trade won't fit. So we are out of luck with any of these trays. And actually, Avalon Hill for some time uh, included some trays in their games which could fit. But of course, no luck here with the trays that we're showing. We have here from Compass, the African campaign. This is the first edition which had a paper map and a one inch box. So will it fit here in this one inch box? Well, this particular game has some play raids, has uh, the map here. And actually it's a two section map, a catalog. And here we have one counter sheet. Of course, one counter sheet will fit in any of these trays. And when we place the Aegis counter tray, it will fit there in that counter tray. You see there's a space to the side where we can throw in the little tiny die and put everything back, except of course the counter sheet, which we assume is now inside the counter tray. And we just close the lid and it fits perfectly there. Let's take a look at a regular a sized compass game. This is their standard two inch box. This is Red Poppies, the battles for Ipa. And here we see that I placed the counters in baggies, some of those. And I used a GMT tray to store the counters. And you can see there's no problem of space in there. So let's assume now that we move the counters to the Aegis tray. So we would place the tray here and it fits very comfortably there. And we'll place everything back, including the markers here. And I believe that we would be able to place these markers inside the Aegis tray. But even if we didn't, you can see that everything fits perfectly in the box. Next, let's take a look at DVG. Here we have Zero Leader. This is uh, DVG's three inch box or detergent box. So let's open this one up. And this is a really tight package. We have here some mounted map boards. These uh, another mounted map board, player uh, aid cards, have these mission charts, we have the rules, and here we have uh, what is a lot of counters, 11 counter sheets, and then you have this insert here, and you have these four decks of cards, and 
two D10s. So let's remove the insert and let's place a DVG tray inside one of their boxes. Of course, it fits and it fits pretty snugly there. There's some space here in the bottom or at the top, depending if you slide the tray. So now let's place the Aegis counter tray and it fits nicely. Notice that these counters are pre-rounded and they are separated between each other. They are 5 eighths of an inch and uh, it's 88 counters for each counter tray and uh, there's a total of 968 of these counters. So the only way that the box will close is if we use two Aegis trays to fit everything in. We would have two trays and then we could place everything else with the boards and the rule books, play rates. Then we would have the cards. The cards, you're going to see that they uh, are taller than the edge of the box, but the cards, what I will be doing, I will be placing them in baggies and splitting these decks. So the cards shouldn't be a problem. So let's see if we can fit all those counters inside this zero liter box, because I know that's a problem that some gamers have after you punch the games, the counters don't fit inside the box. But because of the extra space that these Aegis trays have, we may be able to fit the equivalence of three counter sheets per Aegis tray, and we may be able to pull it out. We just finished punching the counters. 11 counter sheets, 88 counters in each, for a total of 968 counters, and we were able to fit all of the counters in two Aegis trays. And you can see here the trays you can see that some of them have space for more counters. I try to organize the counters so that uh, the game is easier to set up than uh, putting everything in one bag. So you have um, different kinds of markers grouped together. And you have here the Japanese planes organized alphabetically. We have the A, B, uh, C's and I believe D's here, the E's start here and so forth. So those are all the counters and these are 5 eighths of an inch pre-rounded counters. 968 of them fit in two Aegis trays. Now let's fit everything back in the box and I've already split the four decks of cards into eight in order for the box to be able to close. So we placed both uh, counter trays. We have the boards here and uh, some other displays and we have the other displays. Here we have the two dice and uh, we split the decks of cards into eight. Let's see if we can fit all eight of them here. So far I've been able to fit four, five, six, seven, and let's see if we can fit everything. And eight. Now for the final test, we'll slide the lid on and It's not bad. Closes pretty well. So that's zero liter, all counters in there with two Aegis trays. And I think you can only pull that off with Aegis trays. Well, the other trays, um, they have a lower counter capacity. Next, we'll go with nine sixteenths of an inch counters. And we will be punching out, clipping, and placing the counters for this game, the Dark Summer, inside an Aegis tray. And here we have all the counters of this game, the Dark Summer, 
which are 9 16 of an inch, two counter sheets inside the Aegis tray. You can see there's a lot of space remaining in uh, these uh, pockets here of the tray. So now let's place the tray back inside the box. We will remove the insert. Place the tray and we will place the rule book, playbook, player aids and map and on top the 1d6 and we close the box and it closes perfectly. So this is the new kid on the block, the Aegis counter tray and here we have the tray side by side with the GMT tray to the left and DVG's counter tray to the right. Now, magazine games. And you may say, why waste a counter tray on magazine games? Well, I'll tell you why I like to use counter trays for some magazine games. And here I have Balkans 1940. Four. This is World at War, issue number 81. This is a magazine game. And what I like about the counter tray is that it gives rigidity to the magazine and the components to such an extent that you can place this magazine on the shelf. And here we see Balkans 1944 on the shelf together with the games by Victory Games there. And you have another magazine, World at War, there with the Partisan game, also on the shelf. So how come the magazine game is not wobbly and uh, it can stand up like that? So let's take a look at what's inside. You know that these magazine games obviously come with counters, paper maps, but no counter trays. And those magazine games that I'm really interested in and which I like, I always dedicate a counter tray. Now this is a GMT counter tray. And the reason I use GMT counter trays and not Aegis's counter trays is because the Aegis counter tray is so long it will not fit inside this uh, 10 by 12 inch Ziploc bag. This is not the bag that magazine games come in. Uh, I don't know if it's been your experience, but my experience is that normally the bags that bring these games are so tight that they can actually harm the components. So I usually get rid of them and I purchased uh, 500 of these. They're very inexpensive. I'll leave the link in the description below in case you want to get some. This is a GMT counter tray. This game brings about 176 5 eighths of an inch counter. So you see there's a lot of space there. So the Aegis trays are very efficient at storing large numbers of counters within a limited space. So of course magazine games will probably not be something you will be using those trays. But for games with a significant number of counters like we saw for, uh, for example, zero liter, of course, the Aegis tray is a good solution because two of those will fix the problem, as we saw for zero liter. So, I hope that this video has given you a good idea of the features of the Aegis counter tray and how it compares to the other trays that are available. And this is Stuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.